Javier from That Racing Channel. Today we have an extra special episode for you. We're featuring Andre's 1995 240SX. And this isn't just any ordinary 240SX. This thing is swapped with a VQ35 HR and it has a massive turbo. And for the OG TRC fans, you might remember this car it used to have a KA in it. This car was likely one of the baddest KA street cars in the entire country, if not the world. On the KA, it was making somewhere around 900 to 1000. We'll plug some clips here for you. racing in general. He's currently helping us build the TRC R32 GTR. We'll have some updates on that coming soon for you. All right, guys, let's check it out. All right, man, go ahead and start her up for us. Nothing like that VQ rumble. Rev it up a little bit. Go ahead and pop the hood. See what the butt dyno says about this uh, this VQ stuff. Uh, okay, all right. I'm, I'm used to the 2J in that chassis. Uh, I don't know, man. You're in the wrong car, man. 2J, what? <laughs> sounds so unique compared to so remember it's very rare that you will find a vq or vr that single turbo setup so it's not twin turbo as a as a usual one so the traditional one. it sounds so dear it sounds so good yeah and it has a 60 millimeter wastegate on it so it's like a two and a half inch dump right through the front of the car i mean i don't hate on any cars if it's fast i like it whatever it is but I'm not always the biggest fan of how the VQ sound, you oh, know? Oh, no, I, I wasn't either. Even when I got in the track and they're, they're doing their burnout and stuff like that, it's like, ugh. But this one I definitely fell in love with. Oh, I yeah. Remember, I remember telling Canil Fab when he was doing the exhaust and the intercooler pipe, and I was like, listen, if this thing does not sound good, or if it sounds anything like those cars at the track, we're taking it back out and putting the game back in. <laughs> that was like the, the deal breaker right then and there. Well, it's still in, so we're good. big 3.5. 
is the responsiveness. Just even to, from a stop, taking off, giving a little bit of gas. Maybe Andre will let me drive it so I can feel it for myself. But even as <laughs> even in the passenger seat. Yeah, I think that's a very good idea. <laughs> I really do. I know it's been a while for you to really drive a good S car, S chassis, with a really good engine. <laughs> Responsiveness is just so nice. It makes it a really nice, like, quote unquote, dailyable daily driver. Because if you have a huge turbo on, say, like a two liter or two four or something like that, on a small displacement engine, it, it really takes a lot to get those things going. Myself. This is Andre Cargill. This is my ugly duckling, my 1995 Nissan 240SX. This current build right now, I've, I've swapped in a VQ35 HR engine, which is not well known. A lot of guys do the DE engine, so I decided to go with the HR route. So traditionally, with this chassis, a lot of guys would go with the VQ DE engine, which is a better fitment into this chassis. So I decided to go to the HR route, which is a better engine, very, very similar to the GTR engine, which is a VR38. So one, one of the goals of getting this engine inside the car was trying to get it far back as possible and as low as possible. So to achieve that, we had to do a custom made wall pan in order to clear the cross member. We had to change out the rack and pinion to a G37 in order to clear the starter location. One of the good thing is that when you measure this engine from front to, to back, uh, it's actually one inch shorter than the KA that was previously in there. And on top of that, we pushed the engine actually one inch further back. So with the weight transfer and the way the car is performing, it's, it's really, really good. Along with the motor and getting into more details about it, the engine, when you get into building it, you have very different sizes that you can go with using OEM parts. You can start from a 3.5, go to 3.7, go to 3.8, all the way up to a 4.0. So I started off small with a 3.5 to kind of really understand how it will perform inside of this chassis. Don't want to go too big if I didn't have to because, you know, torque at looking for the goal of horsepower that we want, we want to have something a little bit more controllable. So. I said, let's start with the 3.5, let's see where it get us, let's build everything around it to get to that goal of 1,000 horsepower, and let's see how it performs. So we did that. We kept the, the short block completely stock, stock piston, stock rod, didn't even open it up. We went ahead and took off the heads because I, I, I totally feel that it's definitely something that you gotta look into is valve train, at least upgrade that when you're trying to rev more or you're trying to make a lot of power. So I put in a set of Jim Wolf valve springs, kept everything else uh, OEM inside of it, resurfaced the heads, put on stock head gaskets, and put on ARP uh, head studs. Nissan is known for having a lot of oil issues from oil pumps from R30, uh, R32s, all the way down to KAs, SR20s, you name it, they have it. And this is behind it too, which is HR. So these engines come with dual uh, VTC, and I didn't want to have that as a issue going to my goal of a, of a thousand horsepower. A lot of times, you know, the cams will run out of phasing, chain for the timing, will guides will wear out, throw the check engine light, and oil pressure would drop. You have a lot of situations going on. So I decided to eliminate that. So I've completely eliminated the VTC out of the HR engine by making custom intake cam gears and adding the Jim Wolf uh, exhaust cam gears. Then I was able to really dial in the engine to what I wanted to and lock it in that position. Along with that, that also took out a lot of rotating mass out of the engine from the OEM. I think after I took out all four cam gears along with the actuators and everything like that, we're close to about 40, 42 pounds that we've actually removed of rotating mass out of it. I didn't do any oil pump upgrades to it except putting on the ATI pulley, which you guys know that's the best thing that you can do for any engine. Um, takes care of that invisible enemy that you're not able to observe or monitor. So one thing you'll notice looking into the interior here, it's pretty simple. <laughs> and I give you props for that. I love the, the OEM factory look in. I mean, you got two gauges. You got oil pressure. And you got what, boost there and uh, air fuel? Yep, boost and uh, air fuel and shift light all in one. Shift light all in one, yeah. And that's it. Other than that, it's all factory. Yep. You can't do it without the old trusty KA oh, the good chain. Oh, the good luck charm right here. <laughs> you gotta get a new one now. Yeah, I gotta get a new one. I'm not gonna replace it though, I'm just gonna kind you of gotta add, it. add it on yeah. there. <laughs> Good name. 
handle it, bro. Nope. That fourth gear pulls. Yeah. This thing is without a doubt TRC approved. <laughs> without a doubt. That's all you can do is just smile. My man. There we go. The only reason why I built it. Because he'd probably kill me if I didn't give it to him anyway. For sure. I think that R32 <laughs> would have got like a thousand horsepower left. Once it gets into fourth gear, I mean, you just really feel that big turbo, the big single. You can just feel that this thing just wants more boost, oh, too. Oh, yeah. You know, you like, yeah. it just yeah. It wants more boost. And as soon as it gets in that tall gear, it starts cranking. And I'm sure you have, like, a boost by gear type thing yeah, set up. Yeah, so. yeah. so it's probably, what, a little bit lower in second, third, and then all out in fourth? Or? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All out is fourth. And you can just tell that it's dying for that more boost. Yeah, man. You hear the whiskey screaming. <laughs> we stripped the car down completely to remove every nut and bolt gasket, that windows that you can imagine. Did all the body work, got the car straightened, put on a new front end, got everything aligned. So we went ahead and went to the next step and did all the sanding and priming and got the car fully painted. Brought the car back here, started to put everything back together, putting in new seals, new windows, going over all the suspension parts, putting in polyurethane bushings. Right after that, we got the engine inside the car with the custom motor mounts um, that I personally made myself. And then one thing that I didn't want to do is I, I wanted to put a nice set of wheels on it and did some offset measurements to figure out what's the right offset to fit this car for 17 inches. So I went in an order and got some really nice weld wheels for it that it's sitting on right now. We've got the car up and running, did some really good street tunes and stuff like that. We were finally able to get it to the dyno. Uh, we got the car up to about 15 PSI. And when we got up there, the car was making a little bit a little bit over 600 and we started cranking it up some more and as we crank it up some more we noticed that the car just wasn't making any power boost was going up everything come to find out uh the clutch started to slip so the clutch was kind of reused back from the last setup that the car had with the four cylinder which was the uh fx 850 from clutch masters so i decided to say hey i just need to do a refresh they went ahead and just recommend hey you know it's a street driving car why don't you just go ahead and try out the fx 1000 i was like fx 1000 he's like yeah and listen, it's pretty much night and day between the 850 and the FX1000 as far as drivability wise. All right, so we're gonna show you a little demonstration of the FX, what is it, 1000? Yeah, FX1000, because the uh, FX850 boy was The FX850 aggressive. was a little tough, huh? Oh, yeah, they're yeah. known to be aggressive. They shift yeah. like butter at higher PM, but they're a bit aggressive on the takeoff. Uh, that was a little Genesis Trigy, bro. You wanna get some? <laughs> we'll show a nice, smooth takeoff with the FX1000 here. After I was very impressed with that swap out and we went through the braking clutch process and we took the car back to the dyno. We made 650 uh, wheel horsepower at about 17, 18 pound of boost. After that, we got the car on the street and everything and we took the car up to about 20 PSI. So somewhere, you know, north of 700 the car is at. We didn't want to push it anymore because it is it is a stock bottom end. We don't really know what territory we need to be within or how much power it could actually make. All the information that we found is just on a 3.7. You know, we just want to leave it there for now until we get a good bottom end uh, built up to go into the car. We've decided that we didn't want to go with the CD09. Uh, a lot of things is size of the transmission, aftermarket support, the gear ratio, and the shifter location. So we end up mating a T56 onto the HR engine to allow us to have that nice position and gear ratio of what, of what we need. When we were mating the, the HR engine to the T56, I developed a CAD drawing and everything and had everything machined out for that adapter plate to mate those two things together. Along with that, I got a custom three and a half inch aluminum drive shaft. As far as rear end, it's actually a custom rear end um, that uses a Q45 LSD along with the J30 ring gears to keep it a 3.9. Axles and spindles, 
everything is upgraded from the Skyline uh, R32, so it's a lot beefier and stronger to support the power that we're making. A lot of times when you're doing a swap to this extent, you usually change out the engine and transmission, and you kind of go and drive the car and you feel a difference between the two. In this case, it's kind of different because the drivetrain is the same. It's something I was used to, the gearing, RPM, mile an hour, all that stuff I'm used to. You put in this big 3.5, and you go ahead and you drive it and it's like just flashing through the gears and you really feel that that difference it's like taking a ka and stroking it to a 3.5 if that makes any sense and keeping everything the same then we got into the fabrication side of the intercooler piping a good close friend of mine Kanil fab supported me in that along with fabricating our, our good well ventilated air box system all in one it's actually our, our our oil catch can and fuse box everything wrapped up into one which is a really really good highlighted piece of the car that everyone really loves along with that we we've got into the intake manifold situation to where you know i just didn't want to cut anything on the car and with the twin throttle bodies that it does come with we decided to make a custom intake manifold for it to allow us to have really good hood clearance don't have to cut anything on the hood to get it to fit and uh, go to a drive-by wire 90 millimeter throttle body to finish off the intake manifold we have a set of 2200 cc injectors from bosch um, that we run in the car currently backed up by a uh, two uh, hellcat Barbara fuel pumps also holding the pressure is an air motive fuel pressure regulator it's pretty basic for the intake side of it the turbo I'm a fan of FP so I'm running a modified GT 45 that's kind of in better terms a 7680 uh, if you want to put it that way and it's working out really really well my thought of turbo would be kind of overkill for what I'm trying to do but then again I'm coming from the four cylinder world the six cylinder is is new to me and into this chassis so it's spooling it up like like you wouldn't even believe. The car is running a, a Link ECU that I do all the tuning on. We get into the exhaust side of it. Uh, we got a real nice uh, equal length manifold. Even though you see the turbo on one side, the manifold is actually linked equal length between both banks. So it's the same length runners, same length Y pipe, and all that is equaled out. Put a lot of work into that one, getting the jigs built and making sure that it fit into this chassis in a perfect location along with running that three and a half inch downpipe. As far as cooling, we've maintained the same S chassis coil radiator along with the Flex Light S chassis custom fans that fit onto it to keep it cool. A lot of people ask me, why did I go this route? Why didn't I just go with something a little bit more simple or more traditional, you know, either RB, 2J, you know, whatever, it is, or LS. So I, I always like to be different. Um, I wanted to keep it true Nissan to Nissan. I didn't want to use a traditional DE, DQ engine because it just has its own issues. So I went with the HR because I think of it like this. The HR, you know, 2J is superior no question from it. So you have the turbocharged 2J and you have the non-turbo 2J. You found out that a lot of those parts are interchangeable to where you can take things from the turbocharged one and put it on the non-turbo 2J. Well, think of it from a Nissan view, you have the VR38 and then you have the HR. Well, the parts from a VR38 GTR motor are interchangeable with the parts for a HR. So I'm just looking at it as far as, okay, well, that's a really good starting point and a really good platform to start with. The only challenge is actually getting that engine mounted where you need it inside of that car. So we went the extra mile of actually making custom motor mounts, making a cross member, changing the rack and pinion, um, getting the engine to where it fits perfectly into this chassis in order to achieve that. So now we're starting at the minimum of a stock short block and now we're gonna go ahead and as I said before we have the program on the side of actually building the VR38 to actually swap over into the chassis. Alright guys so Andre said I could drive this thing I'm super stoked it's been a while since I've been in an S14 let's do this. Alright man give me this. <laughs> so how long has it been? How long has it been? How long Four has it years been? since since being in an S14, the 2J240. 2J2, oh my god. Going what? You had to say that. 790. Oh, uh, you gotta bring all that to it. And 175. <laughs> How fast has this one been? <sighs> <laughs> so just to let you guys know, um, I think he would probably be the first driver to drive this car in the past eight years. Oh my, dude, I'm, you, you make me, you make me nervous now. You better be.
always gonna be a special be a special place in my heart for a 2J. But damn, this is fun, dude. Wow. I'm sorry, KA guys, but this just takes the cake. Uh, so I got I gotta get another two three shift here. Are you falling in love? That's just it's just too much fun, bro. <laughs> Alright, so a little mis mishap there. Lockout's not hooked up yet. <laughs> so I uh, just about put the car in reverse at 60 miles an hour. Dude, this thing feels awesome, man. So it's way different than obviously like an automatic, the, the 240i had was a 2J car making probably 1100 wheel horsepower and uh, had the A340. So this is a little bit different of experience, but it's just so much more visceral feeling and you just, you feel that raw 90s. 40 feeling again, you know, it's so much better than the automatic with modern drivability <laughs> with modern drivability. Yeah, I mean, it's super responsive like you just you know, you downshift it With this engine in it, it's it's nothing like the KA. This thing's a blast dude So yeah. now that he's driven his car, he's gonna be pressuring me every night about finishing the R32 <laughs> I think I just fucked myself. So this is drive-by-wire, right? It feels like really different than like the Supra where there's like a little lag in the pedal yeah. where like the drive-by wire is literally like you just you just tap it and it just goes like butter and I know like I, I saw you you are trying to beat on it like taking care of it you know so I didn't I didn't want to beat it up too hard power shift but just doing like a, a fairly swift you know shift and it's just it's like butter man it's so smooth and this is so this is a, a t56 magnum yeah t56 okay. magnum that type this is one hell of a beast you built my man oh man thank you very much <laughs> TRC approved TRC approved no <laughs> doubt you get like what's that three stamps in this video oh now? my gosh man I've been working on the fourth one <laughs> All right, how many TRC approved stamps do we need to finish the Skyline? Uh, <laughs> There's not enough stamps. Not enough stamps. <laughs> so, uh, at your invitational uh, events that you be having, what kind of mile an hour do you think we'll be trapping with your uh, butt dyno? Uh, I don't know, man. Yeah. The butt dyno probably says he's low 140, something like that. Okay, that sounds okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I so. Take it. I can take it. When the car was KA 750-ish, the car was trapping from dead stop uh, 149, 148 around there. Oh geez, so it'll probably be well into the 140 cent. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I can't thank you enough. I feel so lucky it's that so you, lucky. It, it's it's honestly, he said it's the first time in uh, yeah, what, eight years? Anybody's driven this car? Anybody's driven this car. Dude, thank you, man. It was a blast. Yeah, man, anytime. You're the man. So you gotta return a favor because of the R32, so that's why I did this, to make sure that I drive it. <laughs> well, you're building this, so you can definitely drive it. Previous setup on the car before we did the HR swap, it was a KA T24. That is definitely always will be inside of my heart, but we had to retire that setup. At that time, the car was making 900 wheel horsepower and it was a really good setup. The car ran really, really awesome with it, but as every drag racer and every car guy, they always want that more, 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 and more. Behind that, we're gonna take a different direction, you know, getting away from the T56 and actually going to a DCT transmission. Transmission we're going to be using is from the F10 BMW uh, M5. That transmission is a full seven-speed DCT that sits behind a V8 twin turbo engine that's in like a 42, 4300 pound car. So it being inside of this car, it's going to be a little bit shy of 3,000 pounds at 1,100 horsepower, shifting at less than you know 100 milliseconds. It's it's really going to be a really good ride. We're also going to help support that with having traction control and a uh, boost by gear to help out with the traction. Really want to keep it a street car, really don't want to go too much on big tire size. 
So we're gonna try and utilize all the modern resources that we have available to kind of keep this thing on the road. So a little bit of history of the car, which is more, you know, sentimental value. Me and the car have been together for a little bit over 15 years, actually. When I got the car, the car was at a body shop and it was just a rolling shell. Uh, missing a complete front, um, paint was horrible, all that good stuff. And that's how the UD Ugly Duckly name originated. So when I got the car, I really didn't care too much about the outside, really didn't care too much about the paint, just wanted to make sure all the good stuff was there. But inside the engine bay, we really took care of it and started to build on top of the uh, KA. It really taught me a lot and helped me achieve a lot of the goals that I was able to get to today. It was our, our, our training module, sort of say, every new product that came out from wastegates to injectors to fuel pumps, parts, turbochargers, intercoolers. I've tested it on this car throughout that whole 15 years. So it's been a real research and development tool that I've used, um, not along with, along with tuning also, you know. It helped put a lot of cars and myself and a lot of friends on the map by being that guinea pig of products and guinea pig of testing our ideas and our thoughts that we come up with. So the car stuff goes back, you know, I've, I've been in the car stuff for about at least past 25 years. And starting off, you know, in high school, starting off with always in my heart, Mazda, not the rotary. This would be piston Mazda. It's the Mazda uh, MX-6 1988. I'll never forget it. It's a car that I got through high school. It's a car that kind of brought me up to give me the know-how. Um, it brought me a lot of tears of building engines and stuff. So Mazda have always will be there and it's been inside of my heart. And the one car that I had exposure to during that time was the 1995 Nissan 240. And this is going back to like 2000 and one, 2000, you know, people were still financing S chassis at that time, if that makes any sense. There's always a car that I've always wanted, and as we evolved, and the Mazda kind of put me on the map and educated me on how to work on other people's cars and gain a lot of friends behind it, it taught us everything that we've known. So along with that, brought in a really good amount of income that allowed us to go ahead and buy that S chassis. From what started, from me tinkering with my little Mazda uh, from high school, it brought a really good group of, of, of guys around me. All the way down to Colin from Crossbreed, Keneal Fab, just want to thank Lance from Toyomoto that helped me tune out the stock ECU. Marlin that got me into EMS tuning. Conroy that exposed me to the KA uh, S chassis. Jeff uh, Yellowbird got me exposed to the RB25. When I got all this exposure to all these different setups, it really taught me a lot and actually helped me evolve into, you know, all the way down to seven second race cars, high 150 mile an hour, 160 mile an hour street cars, progressed me into getting into the TRC cars, which all started with the TRC uh, 240SX. Then right after that was backed up by the TRC Supra. And now we're getting into the TRC R32 project, which is really, really coming along really sweet. Hopefully, you know, within the next month or two, we'll have it island sitting down to where you guys will be able to view it and see it live. I also would like to thank my family for understanding and dealing with my madness, my addiction to speed and cars.